The following game has no ESRB rating, nor is there a listing of any sort of restrictive content that may appear in the game. However, I do know for a fact that it does include violence, bloodshed, explosions, fire, and the death of people and various animals. So if I were to guess as to what its rating would be, I would say either teen or mature. So that being said, viewer discretion is advised, and I recommend that anyone under the age of 13 not watch the following video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations, I am Outlier and I bid you welcome to this channel. Joining me today is of course my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today we're returning back to RimWorld. Well, I'm not switching things up, you're just confused about the games again. No, yet again, that is an entirely different game by an entirely different name. I will tell you. The general premise of RimWorld, or at least how I've usually seen other people play this game, is that the game gives you a random assortment of randomly generated colonists who are sent to a far-flung pseudo-sci-fi world known as a RimWorld because it's on the edge of known space. I'll get to that in a minute. And you, the player, are then tasked with building these randomly generated colonists a uh, functioning colony with uh, everything that they need, um, inclu up to and including uh, reliable food supply, relatively comfortable accommodations in terms of bedding and uh, not too ugly uh, living and work conditions, uh, various jobs for them to do as well as a means of defense. Because you're not the only one uh, playing the game, uh, up against you is what's known as an AI storyteller, which, depending upon which one you choose, actually, no, not depending upon which one you choose, because their objectives are all the same, it's just they differ in how they go about doing it. Basically, this storyteller's uh, main goal is to provide random events uh, for your enjoyment, while at the same time making certain that these said random events uh, kill off your colonists one by one. Or if it can kill off multiples of your colonists at the same time, more the benefit to it because it's trying to wipe out your colony. Which is why the random events are usually more detrimental than beneficial and a few beneficial uh, ones there are out there uh, usually are fewer and farther in between than the detrimental ones. But I say that's how most people play the game because in addition to all of that, uh, just for added flair and uh, added restrictions and because I've never tried this before, I've been role-playing my colonists as a heavily armed and armored and uh, highly advanced uh, squad of space marines uh, who have been sent to the planet to fight the pirates. Uh, yes, I'll get to that. Uh, sadly, they haven't really done much pirate fighting as of late, mostly because uh, settlements on the planet are few and far between, and it takes a while to get anywhere. 
Also, I don't, while I have the technology to get other places relatively quickly, I don't have the fuel to power it. So, it's been an adventure. And, uh, I see little reason not to keep going because the game hasn't managed to kill off my people yet. And not for lack of trying, but because I figured it will, so I included some uh, items to basically bring people back from the dead. But those are slowly running out, and once uh, they run out and people start dying and I can't bring them back, well then, well things will get interesting. But that's not an issue for right now, and as such, this game is of course made by... Thank you again, and uh, that being said, let us begin. Okay, so this is one of my bases. I say one because I have two. If I can click on the right square. And this is the other one. And the reason why I have two bases is because, as I said, my co I'm role-playing my colonists as space marines hunting down pirates. And pirates don't all live in the same area, so my people have to be semi-nomadic. So once they clear out an area of pirates, uh, they move on. Currently, they're working on setting up the new base. They've been at this for quite a few episodes because I never build small and it takes forever to actually build anything in, well, in this game, mostly due to lack of resources. Now, I have built quite a bit up of the base. There is still quite a bit left to actually finish constructing. I do have the uh, main storehouse complete, the battery and some power generation going on. Uh, the barn for all my animals, which happened to be at my other base, wandering about. Uh, as well as the kitchen, uh, technically kitchen, well, uh, as well as food storage, technically the kitchen area, and what will eventually be the dining hall, except now it's a blood-covered, puke-filled uh, sleeping quarters, because they haven't built the barracks yet. Also, there's a prisoner in here because, if you haven't seen last episode, one of my people tried to run away, and I decided I wasn't having any of that, so I arrested them, and... Rather than allowing me to release them and everything be fine, uh, part of the way through the arrest, uh, the game wouldn't let me do that anymore, so I threw them in prison, and the only building I had available for a prison was the kitchen. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, uh, I do plan on building other buildings. This, I said, will be the, eventually the barracks, uh, field hospital, armory, and then crafting area. Uh, this will be uh, the rec room. The actual prison area will be up here. And I have extra space for other things. Also, defensive perimeter, which for a military unit you would think would actually go up relatively soon. Uh, it hasn't actually gotten up yet. Why is there a whole bunch of blood here? A wild boar that um, is a fresh kill. Oh yeah, I think mechanoids landed here. Somebody landed here. That's why there's a whole bunch of destroyed stuff. Anyway, uh, so this is the base I'm currently working on. As I said, I technically have two if we go to the world. So these are my two bases. This is FOB Chesling, the new base that everybody was looking at. Whereas this is FOB Antioch, Ford Operating Base, as I believe the military jargon is. And uh, this it was an old pirate base that I basically landed here, gathered up all my equipment, attacked the pirate settlement, took it over, and I've been using it to operate out of as I sacked this pirate settlement and slowly took it apart over the course of 
several in-game years. Now, the main goal is, again, to attack the pirates, so... We'll get factions, there's a whole bunch of factions. Uh, some of them are friendly, others, well, are not. And the pirate faction, or the Black Sinners, as this game calls them, are signified their settlements are with the Skull and Crossbones, and I have to take out as many of those as I can while on the way to, if I look at active quests, the Ship to the Stars, which is all the way over here. And while Ship to the Stars is a standard built-in quest, uh, I've been role-playing it, much in the same way my people have been have been role-playing my colonists as Space Marines. I've been role-playing that ship as their exfiltration vessel. So basically, they have to go from here, well, now from uh, FOB Chesling, uh, all the way to the landed ship, which changes every episode, because every episode I film is basically a new month. And uh, a lot of times when I've centered the uh, quest plotter on, well, the route planner on Antioch, it's taken me down around up and through this way, whereas with Chesling, which is more to the west, it's actually having me travel to the east and up. But, um, I'm nowhere near close to moving, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. I mean, if anything, I would figure out which pirate group I want to hit next. But that requires building up Chesling and various resources, because while I can walk from point A to point B, you know, if I go to the next closest pirate settlement, which is here, it'll take 5.2 days and travel all the way around through here. I do not have the supplies to have a bunch of people walk 5.2 days. So my plan is, once I actually had it researched, because I didn't start with the research, which I uh, already unlocked, which is a great grave oversight on my uh, part. If I go to... Here we are. I can build pod launchers now. At least I've been able to build pod launchers for several episodes now. And these launchers, I actually have two right here, uh, can be used to launch supplies and people uh, rather far across the map. And they do require pods, which I have to build every time. In fact, because there's actually gas here, let's actually build a couple. This is over at Antioch. And Antioch got hit with the Toxic Plume, that's why I moved over to Chesling. Uh, plus, Antioch ha was running out of space for, well, everything, and I had quite a few problems with Antioch. Not the least of which was also general lack of an outer defensive perimeter, but uh, that's my fault, more than the games. Space, yes. So, moving. Uh, and However... What do I want to say? I lost my train of thought. Chesling, Antioch, Toxic Plume. So I decided to move out here to this base because Antioch was no longer livable. The Toxic Plume ended before I could finish Chesling and move everything over, but uh, I still feel like moving. So they're currently in the process of building various things and stuff and various things. Now look at guinea pig. So there's that, and in addition to role-playing my people as a uh, group of space marines, there are also, it's just more than just flavor text, there are also rules that I'm here adhering to. One is, of course, the semi-nomadic lifestyle, trying to get to the exfiltration vessel. Another rule that I have is that I can't go to war against somebody I'm not already at war with. And so, like for instance, the Refugee Empire, the Lehane Federation, and the Kamalusi Pact, uh, or I'll start off as neutral and slash or friendly. And this rule prevents me from taking any quest or doing anything which would outright declare war against one of these three factions. I can still fight the Kotor Kin League, the Grey Goose Boko, and the Kanto Alliance, but my primary targets are the Black Sinners. So while I may 
uh, go out and track down every black center encampment I can find. Uh, if you know, I come across, like say, the Canto Alliance, I generally try to leave them alone unless they have issues with me. Uh, this is also another quest, which I'm probably not going to get to because it's rather far out and I don't feel like traveling that far. Plus, the main reward is getting somebody else that will just tick me off. Though it is only about two days away one way. And it is springtime, so they should have... I would say they should have food, but this is all desert, so who knows. Oh, and another thing is that... No, and another role that I have is that uh, my colonists work for an interstellar government known as the Commonwealth. And no, I did not actually create any more back lore or uh, headcanon as it's called, I believe, uh, past the actual name. But uh, that means for anybody who's actually played the game with the royalty expansion, there is such a thing known as Royal Favor, which is another way of leaving the planet. Basically, you do quests for the Refugee Empire. That's the wrong screen. Uh, and they, yeah, and one of the crest rewards is royal favor, which means you get uh, advancement in rank within their organization. And if you get a high enough rank, and their leader is impressed by uh, your people, uh, he can invite your colony, your colonists, whoever's left, or whoever they feel like taking, I believe, uh, up to join him on his interstellar orbital uzawatts. And uh, that's one way of winning the game, but because my people work for the co work for the Commonwealth, they can't accept royal favor in exchange for quests. So, like for instance, I have the extensive construction quest, which showed up from last episode, which I do plan on accepting. I just haven't actually gotten around to it yet. And uh, well, the quest itself is basically just build a monument. And if this were to have come from the Empire, it would have been do this quest for XYZ amount of royal favor. Uh, since my people work for, the com or work for the Commonwealth, as I've said several times now, they can't actually accept royal favor. So I have set it up so that way they can uh, accept it for goodwill and various other stuff. So, like for instance, rather than saying goodwill right here, if I build this monument uh, within 38 days, I can either get a bunch of tech prints and some gold, 27 advanced components or uranium, and a bunch of plasteel, uh, masterwork helmet, uh, orbital artillery, and the devil's drug. Yeah, that's a thing. So those are my options in lieu of royal favor. Also, if I attack anywhere or you know have a settlement, move everything, take everything apart, I also shouldn't or technically can't or won't leave anything usable behind. Technically I have because I've missed a few things and I didn't feel like taking apart a structure just because it had a weather control device inside and you know, hostile emu were encroaching so I left most of the shell intact. Uh, but for like since for instance Antioch anything I can't take well anything I can't take with me after I move everything over to Chesling I either have to destroy or, well, there is no ore. I have to take it with me or I have to burn it to the ground. Those are my options. So, with that in mind, uh, let's continue. So, let's actually, because I have two days to accept the quest, let's actually accept the quest. And, as much as I would probably benefit from having that many advanced components... Uranium, I don't think, really has much of a use because uh, nuclear generators are through a mod, and I have not modded this game. I probably should. I mean, I'm sure there's a uh, quite a few enhancements I could get from using modified files, but I have a love-hate relationship with mods, and uh, but that's the extent of my experience with mods. So yeah, vanilla games. So, this quest. Let's actually accept it for the Tech Prince. As I was saying, I could accept it for, uh, you know, the advanced components and the uranium. I probably would need the advanced components. But if we look at research, 
there are several higher end compo uh, pieces of equipment that require the tech prints like cataphract armor, you know, artificial metabolation, uh, metabolism, I really should read what's there, and whatever the next thing is, I think healing factors, all require technical uh, components in addition to just simple actual research. Okay, I was going to say I wonder why they're giving me, why it's giving me all their uh, rewards right off the bat, but no, it's a monument marker, uh, which is Frabu, which is what I need to actually cite where the monument's going to go. So now I have to ask the very big important question of where am I putting this thing? I mean, I do want to not put it on the road, but because if it gets damaged after I complete it, this area entire area gets hit with a toxic plume for two weeks. I should figure out where I want it within the defensive perimeter. I also don't want to put it too close to these steam geysers on account of I can use them to build hydroelectric plants. So if I actually... Put hydro plants there just so that way I know where they are. They're probably going to start working on them right off the bat, but... Uh... So this is actually a very big, very tall monument. I wasn't actually expecting something this large. No, I was expecting you know, something this size, which was another monument that I made that apparently my sheep have decided to live in. But anyway, I guess I should have read the dimensions better. I mean, I could technically fit it here. If I hang it this way. How long does this monument have to last? Eleven home, like basically twelve hundred unit, uh, twenty one hundred units of stone. You have to protect the mine for 57 days. If any piece is destroyed, uh, I get hit with a toxic fallout blanket. With a blanket of toxic fallout, I should say. Killing outdoor plants and animal life. Alright, that would make it hard, but I do have all these greenhouses and they're all roofs, so they should be fine. At least in regards to food. So, how much stone do I have over here? And that's leather. Quite a bit of steel, quite a bit of wood, but not much stone. Because all of my stone, quite literally all of my stone, is over here. So, I mean, I had been planning on moving the animals back. And I guess if they go back relatively soon, they could take, well, as much sandstone as they can carry, I guess, be the issue. So yeah, let's at least sight the thing. Let's put it here. So that'll go there, and once I get the stone moved over, I'll figure out how to get everything where I want it to go. Okay, why are they packing corpses over here? There should be no corp... There should be no corpses. Human-like or animal. Any animal corpses should actually go in storage. Whereas human-like corpses should technically be buried. Where did I put the grave sites? Oh, up here. And they actually filled all three of them. There's still at least one more, so let's build a fourth. As opposed to over at Antioch, where I ordered uh, 
five graves because a bunch of raiders attacked. And I think all my animals ate all the corpses. Because I have absolutely no idea where the corpses went. Of course, they probably went on into the dumping zone, which I don't think exists anymore. So yeah, I'm inclined to believe that the animals ate them. Anyway, let's proceed on. Yeah, they're starting to build these things, and I don't want them to build these things right now. I just had them in the way so I could cite the monument. Okay, so the monument's been set. Yeah, this is... So you need a large stelly. So like four of them. Two grand stellies. Sorted walls. And flooring. Multiple sar two sar sarcophaguses. Sarcophagi. It looks like two tables. Two by two tables. Now, one thing that I had just thought of literally right now is... What if, rather than wasting resources to build these things... I need, as I said, four large stelly. I claim this... Oh, I can't deconstruct it. I was say, I claim this, I uninstall it, I take it with me, and I build it there. But apparently I can't, so moot point. Yeah, I deconstructed. It's all worth resources in the end. Oh look, a ship chunk. Deconstruct that as well. So, fun times, fun times. Uh, speaking of which, one thing I neglected to mention at the very beginning is people have a tendency to freak out and hate things uh, because everybody has various needs that they need to fulfill. And if they don't fulfill needs and they have various things affecting their needs, their, mo their uh, mood goes down and they have a psychotic break, which could be everything from just giving up and walking away as akin to as kind of like what Minoka tried to do. Uh, to just simply wandering around in a, cat in a catatonic state, to being angry and trying to break things and kill people. Very annoying, and happens always at the most inopportune time. But uh, one of the things that you can do to mitigate people going crazy is to give them their own rooms, which what the barracks is for and why it looks the way it does. Now, several of my colonists are actually married to each other. So, uh, I don't need separate rooms for the married couples because they want to sleep together. So, I basically need two rooms for two people. Well, multiple people can live in the same room is what I'm trying to say. And I did not end it, uh, fit this correctly. So, actually, let's... all this up one Need doors in the middle here I need for temperature uh, control put in three heaters roughly in the middle for to keep things warm in cold times and to keep things cool in hot times uh, these air conditioners. Everything will be centrally located so that way I don't need uh, independent heating for each room, which, you know, seemed like a good idea at the time, although back at Antioch I didn't put in nearly as much stuff as what I needed, so uh, things didn't keep cool or hot as, ne as they could have been. Right, 
and once they get this finished, at least the outer structure finished being built, uh, then I'll put in floors and carpets and actual furniture and then start moving people into the barracks. Of course, I am running low on components at uh, Cheslin. missing blueprints. I'm well aware of that. I have slightly other pressing concerns. Say, so where are my... Yeah, I don't have any stored components. Each of these need three. So I'm assuming they didn't grab the one they mined here, any from here, so this only produced one. You know, I should actually focus on being able to, on focusing research on making more. Of course, Antioch kind of has its own problems in that uh, they're not harvesting wood, so they don't have power, uh, the power generators don't have fuel. So all their power comes from the solar panel, the solar generators, and it's not enough to store everything through the night, so things will start turning off sooner rather than later. What are they where? They're currently working on hospital beds. Where is component construction? I know it's around here somewhere. At least it should have been around here. Did they get rid of it? Also, something tells me... Oh no, hospital bed just requires the high-tech uh, bench. Multi-analyzer, everything past here requires the multi-analyzer. Okay, so I'm, I, I kept looking for component construction, but I believe it's actually under fabrication. So in order to build the fabric, uh, to research fabrication, I need the multi-analyzer, which is something that sits right next to the high-end workbench. Which requires 40 steel, 50 plastic steel, and 20 gold. Apparently I'm out of plastic steel and gold. Of course, I do have the plasteel over at Chesling, but no gold. And I can get, I believe, gold if I complete the monument. You'll know, get a whole bunch of gold, quite a bit of gold, actually, uh, if I complete the monument. So I should probably focus on that. I should probably also focus on lighting the rest of this. Because the one thing I don't seem to ever be uh, lacking currently is steel. I say that with only about 2,000 steel left. I got like 1,400, almost 15,000 wood. But usually I have practically no steel to my name, so I basically hoard it. Yeah, I know I said I finished the supply um, area, but it's basically just the outer shell. I mean, it's still technically got a dirt floor. Which I should probably put on a floor in, but I want the barracks done first. Which I think they're actually started working on. At least those people who haven't gone to sleep yet. Say how's Minoka do, uh, going, but she still has quite a bit of resistance left. And Bowman is suffering a major break. Because Bowman still has the plague. Although her immunity is at uh, 90%, whereas her plague is only at 60%. And she can tend now, so Jenny, I shall wake her up and tend to Bowman. Because I think the plague is cheap, you know, how the plague happened was kind of cheap, even though somewhat relevant to current um, times. I 
a flash storm is over, but pretty much quite a few things are on fire. Huh. There's a whole bunch of corpses over here. And fire is even spreading because unlike normally the where the flash storm jumps to a um, rain, it's still clear. This guy has gotten food poisoning. Well, that just makes perfect sense, I guess. Hercules is vomiting all over the, well, will eventually be the hop farm. The bison right there that isn't mine. I mean, they did manage to complete one solar generator. But it's still draining power faster than power is being produced. So, and I need six components to complete everything. That'll be a problem. Of course, I do have 17 components over here, so what I'm going to do is send all my animals back. So, we're going to form a caravan to Chesling. And it'll consist of Shinto, Stanislav, and Yoko. I'll keep Blue and Chief here because uh, Blue and Chief are engaged and Chief... How do I want to put this? Uh, likes to have mental breakdown after mental breakdown. It's practically his hobby. Though that reminds me. Hang on. Let's cancel that for a quick second. I don't want to break up married couples. Bowman does have a later in form of... Uh, lover in form of Tater. Although Tater is, always, is currently already at Chesling anyway, so kind of a little point there. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, Caravan. From A to B. Uh, Bushinto, Stanislav, and Yoko. They're going to take every animal that I have on the roster. Because while at Antioch, they don't really have much in the way of gardens growing, so uh, my pets, the Huskies and the uh, Labrador Retrievers, aren't getting, well, much, if any, of the in the way of food. So they're starting to starve, chronically. And it's uh, becoming an issue with various people. So we'll get travel supplies. We are not taking every last bit of food that they have. Uh, I will leave them with 30, 30, uh, blah, 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 50 herbal meds. Uh, I will take... Three people are going. Let's take 10 units of simple meals. As for items, I'll leave five components behind. So they'll take 12. I believe I have plenty of steel back at Cheslin, but I am going to need the sandstone, which is actually some, well most, but not all of their carrying capacity. So I'll also take the jade as well, as much cloth as they can carry. I'll take these things as well, as well as the Psychic Reader. Also transfer over, no, let's transfer 1500 silver over. Uh, just simply because there have been merchants coming over to Chesling and they've had a few interesting things, but silver is the currency of the game, as well as the building component, and I haven't had anything to pay caravans, and they didn't really want anything that Chesling had, so. 
that and uh, I guess fill the rest with all this various leathers. Any furniture I can take? No. Okay. I mean, they can still fit plenty more. I mean, plenty more. I'm actually surprised that they can carry this much stuff. Oh, well, I guess max out whatever they can else they can take with marble and steel. That's as close as they're probably going to get. So, uh, go. Caravan has no food. They have ten, plenty of food, although not enough for the animals, but, um... Uh, it's springtime, so the animals should be able to graze along the way. And if not, then, well, uh, Caravan's going to have issues. Meantime, Bowman's going to town on these gazelles. I would say these fires are spreading, but uh, the toxic plume hasn't had a chance to, uh, the plants haven't had a chance to regrow from all the toxic plumes. So, Sky is on an insulting spree. Okay. Why does she have intense pain? She's suffering from food poisoning and the toxic plume gave her dementia. She's one of my best. She's one of my healers, and she has dementia. Yeah, that's a thing. Anywho, Chief and Hercules are suffering from minor break risks. And I think the caravan's on its way out, and they're on the way. Okay, cool. She flux a ranged weapon because I haven't had a chance to actually build any yet. Hercules is suffering from a major break risk because he also has food poisoning and the caravan has arrived. So goody even though they arrived from the eastern side. So, if we look at animals... Now all the pets go to the pets area. So I don't believe they're carrying anything, whereas... Don't really know who's carrying what and what counts as well. I know what counts as a pack animal. The sheep definitely don't, but I think the horses and the yaks and certainly do. So things like the sheep, the squirrel, and the raccoon go directly to the animal area. I have a ridiculously large amount of sheep. There's anything that can serve as a pack and pack mule, like the uh, alpacas and whatnot. Why is this alpaca injured? Do I want to know why this alpaca is injured? You know, a couple episodes ago I had two male muffalo. Now I have two female muffalo. Oh, you're pregnant. You also suffered from burns. Okay. Who's got low food? We got 75 units of food. It's Antioch because I sent the one and only cook away. Okay, fine then. Lou is now the chef. I mean, they have a bunch of dead animals that they can carve up for meat. Okay, so one of my people, uh, not one of my people, uh, end of the last episode, a bunch of angry wild turkeys attacked uh, Chesling, and there was a caravan here that uh, fought them off. A couple people died, 
none of my people. Uh, but one person was injured, so he's now recovered. So I'm guessing he'll eventually leave, which I'm fine with. You know, they did my people a solid, so I have no problem with them. I almost forgot. Um, pack mules. I have all the pack mules in here so that way, you know, rather than waiting for my colonists to unpack everything, I can just do it myself. Of course, the problem is the overlay of everything. It makes it sometimes hard to see the pack animals. So I could have sworn I had more pack animals than that, but uh, apparently some of them weren't actually carrying anything. It's odd, considering I thought they had uh, like one kilogram shy of their maximum allotment. Of course, it could have also been a case that some of them were already pre-unpacked or unpacked when I was looking. That is technically an option. Okay, so that one's carrying the simple meals. They gotta go to the fridge. I just realized I actually have a pair of stored heaters right here. I technically don't need to build these two. Well, they're building this one already, so I can cancel this one install this one here so my next question is is that everything they actually have a spare battery in here that there chairs, random bed. Maybe I gotta take stock of what furniture I have in here. Of course, I should do a lot of things that I don't do. I would say I'm fairly certain that's all the pack mules, but I'm also fairly certain I've probably missed quite a few. When it is nighttime, sometimes they actually sleep on top of each other. So, sometimes it's hard to see. Do I need tables for this thing? Can I install them here? I can actually install this limestone table right here. So, one less thing I gotta build. Is there a second table? There is a second table. It's a steel table. Use that for the monument as well. Because I wonder if it gets if they get damaged or destroyed before the monument's finished. Does that you know, cause the toxic plume to hit? Well, I'll find out, I guess. So it would be nice if we just select all of them at once and just drop all of their gear. I haven't seen components show up here yet, so I'm assuming they haven't actually, I haven't actually unpacked the components yet. Plus side, I found a sniper rifle, although the one guy that needs a weapon, technically I have two people that need weapons, although one of those people is currently a prisoner of my own people. That's a whole bunch of wood. It's another bed. Any more random alpacas I missed? The donkey right here I missed.
Alright, I think I at least got all the alpacas, so... I can have those go to the animal area. Watch, I missed like 10 of them. That's the muffalo, but I don't think the muffalo actually had anything to begin with. Yep, I missed one. So a pack of 38 has got to go back in. As does 13. I'm not seeing any of the others. So yeah, out of 36 alpaca, I guess I missed two. That's better than I thought it would be. So now that you're inside, drop off the stuff, and you can go to the animal area. Where's the other one? There you are. You can also go to the animal area. Alright, how many yaks do I have? 14 yaks. I mean, somewhere I dropped off the components because it's now flagging as 12 and that's all I brought, so... All the yaks can go. Well, missed one. Yeah, they seem good. Missed a donkey. Missed two donkeys. Yeah, I guess that's all the animals, so... no, oh, hang on. Got one more pack mule left. So out of all the animals that I brought and all the things that I brought, I missed six pack mules from in here. Okay. It's actually not bad. Now I should have enough components to at least finish the solar generators. That's sixth right there. I also need three more for each for the coolers, so... And that'll be my other six right here, so that'll be all the components I had access to. It's a good thing I found two spare heaters. And Sky is starving because Sky is angry. You know what? Sky can go grab food whenever she wants. I actually got quite a bit of the farm squirrel. Not so much the hay grass. But uh, the plants are uh, taking forever to grow because they're plants. So what do we have in terms of wildlife? This is wildlife, right? Yeah. Why is this Ibex doe unconscious? Had a heart attack. Interesting. It's food. This raccoon is dead. The red fox ate it. This ram is also food. So I'll hunt these turkeys 
and these raccoons and these guinea pigs so leave the boom rat alone because it's a boom rat also not hunt the well hunt the donkeys but not hunt the bisons and there's also a grizzly bear a couple mega sloths and a red fox just hanging around and if I call too much of the herbivore wildlife, the predators, the bear and the foxes, will start hunting my either animals or in case of the bear, possibly even my own people. Alright, so Blue's getting food made, so it should hopefully eventually be fine. Jet fill constructing cooler. Don't tell me he wasted components. I'd be pissed if he wasted components. And he probably did, in fact, waste components. So there will only be one cooler here because I want the... I had just enough components to build everything. And, um... I want the solar generators done before the coolers. Jet and Yoko are suffering from major breaks. Yoko from food poisoning. And Jet also from food poisoning. So yeah, probably should have fired the chef. Who's actually on the cook? Uh, so it's either Ophelia, Sky, or Yoko. So Yoko could have technically given herself food poisoning. And the Gregus Boko is attacking. Gregus Boko is attacking Antioch. Three people are attacking Antioch. And Chief does not have a weapon, so I have three people technically to defend it. Where are they attacking? They're coming this way. has a knife. The guy with the knife is now dead. Shoot him. Be so kind. Ophelia is having a tantrum. She's going to destroy a hyperweave bedroom because why not? Meanwhile, uh, Blue got hit in the left leg with a short bow, or recurve bow, I should say. Alright, and one of the guys is now dead. We kill the other guy. They did kill the other guy, okay then. On the plus side, Chief now has a weapon. And she broke a bedroll, because why not? And because I can't make hyperweave, I can't replace it with similar type of equipment. Yeah, best guess, she didn't even break her own bedroll. Yeah, she didn't even break her own bedroll. It takes 40 hyperweave to make a bedroll, and destroying that netted me 20. Well, how much leather do I have? Long plain leather, okay. Got the most plain leather, so this one gets replaced with plain leather and Yoko Jet, Tater, Hercules, Lincoln. Ophir's bedroll goes to the one who person she just destroyed. 
And a rhinoceros self-tamed. Okay. Sure, why not? And Hercules is now has a corpse obsession. So he's just gonna dig up a random body and show it off to people. And relations from the Camelusi Pact has changed from 44 to 59. No, I'm not going to be saving this guy, so let's just get rid of that. Another sheep is pregnant. Some place is suffering from low food, I think I can guess where. Why is it 39 degrees inside the kitchen area? What is this set to? 70. Uh, okay, due to lack of training maintenance, one of my yeah, animals is closer to being wild. Ophelia is literally sleeping in the freezer because she no longer has a bed because she decided to break somebody else's. Fine. How about just sleep on the ground? Okay, so hopefully that'll give me enough power to actually charge everything. I mean, it looks like it. Everything should technically be on, and I am getting a net positive, albeit a small amount, so. And Yoko is now wandering around in sadness because she wanted to sleep with Stanislav. So did I leave Stanislav elsewhere? No. Uh, because... Their husband and wife, and everybody's sleeping in literally the same room. And Minoka's now wandering around in the daze because she is also in a poor mood. Uh, because she is in a hideous environment. Of course, she's also currently technically in jail. So, move point. Alright, so they finished three rooms, technically. Four rooms now. Exotic trader from the Lehane Federation has arrived. Over at Antioch. So, who has the highest social skills over at Antioch? So, Bowman has two, Lou has two, Chief has two, and Jenny has three. Everybody who's good at talking to anybody uh, is over at the other base. So. Lincoln's now suffering from major break risk. And the batteries... I think almost ran out of juice. Anywho. Uh, Jenny. Caravan. Talk to people. I'm gonna ask if the other person, if the uh, guy who was resting left, but uh, he's at the other. I could sell him a rhino for 400 and change. I'll buy the components, because I always need more components. And the plasteel. It's a shield core. 
piece of ultra technology can generate a momentum repulsor shield. He can't do anything on his own, but he's to grab some other usable shield items. Shield cores can be attained by deconstructing mechanoid shield generators. I really hope that isn't needed for personal shields. That's really about it. They do they do have some gold for sale, which I could technically send to the other colony to build the multi, I would say to build the multi analyzer, but the uh, advanced workbench is is at Antioch. So. You know, I'll buy that too. Of course, that's more gold. It's more silver than I have access to, and. They really don't want anything. I could sell the side trainer that I apparently have. You know what, I'll sell the rhinoceros that decided to sell him. That way I can keep some of the money that I have. Really, all that they want, uh, they don't really want anything else that I have. So, let's accept it. Plus, side, a lot of my crops are close to growing. I mean, the corn's taking forever, but it's corn. It probably would take forever, regardless. But uh, a lot of the rice seems to be three quarters to halfway grown. Potatoes are about halfway. Uh, strawberries are just under halfway. Yeah, and this side's basically not so much food, but auxiliary crops. Yoko's no longer wandering around in sadness. The Lincoln's now suffering from extreme break risk. Because uh, he wants to sleep with Ophelia, and he can't. Also ate without a table and is in a rather ugly environment. It's also recreation and food deprived. When did they shoot a fox? Also, we finished researching hospital beds, so... What else do I want? No, let's go with the... So let's go with deep drilling next, but um, I'm not entirely certain how useful that'll be. I mean, I'm fairly certain it would actually be quite useful. Don't get me wrong about that. So I know that there was a uh, shield uh, category looking for that and there it is do I have a machining table all my crafting equipment still over here so I do have a machining table but for some reason I thought that said make flak parts I was like why do they need parts for flak stuff but no that's uh, flak pants the shield belt's there, but I'm looking for the deployable one. Because everybody that I have is technically armed with ranged weapons. Having a shield belt that doesn't affect ranged weapons... Oh, there it is, the shield pack. Does it need to be making? Okay, so I need a shield core for this. So that's what the shield core is for. Okay. So I can't really make this without shield core. So I thought the low shield packs would be useful if they need a part that I can't produce. Their op my options with regards to them are rather limited. Still, you never know. I might be able to find a way to get close to them. And Ophelia and somebody else was fighting Sky, I think. Trade Caravan is leaving. Ophelia and Sky are no longer fighting. Why were they fighting to begin with? 
and somebody bit somebody else. Sky bit Ophelia in the left leg. Because that makes about as much sense as anything else I've seen, so why not? Lincoln's still suffering from major break risk. On the plus side, half the rooms are now done. Let's say, why haven't they roofed in the central corridor, but they're still working on that vent, I guess. They'll put in a wood floor here. Carpeting for here. Go red, then green. I'll make the floor covered by the doors, just simply wood as well. Then blue. It's also fine carpeting, interesting. And then I guess I go back to red because they only have five colors in 12 rooms. So, okay. Alright, and now they start <laughs> roofing the central area. And they have, and there's now a raid from the Black Sinners, also at Antioch. Because that makes perfect sense. I mean, technically it is the lighter defended area. So, also attacking immediately. And they're coming from this angle. So, sandbags it is. You go there. Of course, the two with shotguns are being outranged by everybody. We're going to have them go over here. Can you shoot him? Okay, one's down. As is blue. Sorry, Jenny. She'll be dead in seven hours. She's also the healer. So let's actually get her inside. And two of their people are now dead. Bum will be dead in 22 hours. Chief right now is in no immediate danger. Neither is blue. So let's have her go here now. You know what? Let's just have her stand in the doorway and shoot people. Can she do that? Yes, she can. I said stand in the doorway and shoot people. And the black sinners are now fleeing. So, since Jenny is now unconscious, who has... The highest medical skill. Bowman doesn't have any medical skill. Blue has four. And Chief has zero. So Blue is in no immediate danger, so she's going to self tend herself. So she's going to tend to Jenny. He's going to run fleeing, and he'll be dead in 13 hours anyway. And I got three other people killed. Well, three more dead. There's also an auto pistol and two revolvers. I've chief grabbed the auto pistol just because. Also, he's still in no immediate danger and Bowman is still going to die in 22 hours if left untended. All in all, not bad, I guess. 
Twitter kind of ish, hopefully, maybe. Probably not. Lincoln's still suffering from major brick risk, and they've almost finished the barracks. At least, the walls of the barracks. Not my most pressing concern right now. Alright, Blue's tending to herself, which I guess is an okay idea. But Bowman is actually at risk of death, so let's have her... Uh, Paka 3 has returned to the wild. Jed has gotten food poisoning. And Minoka is no longer wandering around in a psychotic state. I got people injured and people dying. Oh, Bowman lost her right little toe. Okay, fine. Uh, Chief is still in no immediate danger. So I guess I'll uh, let Blue tent herself. And rather than resting, she gets to heal Chief. Would say also add three more graves to the pile, but uh, there's still the five from last time that they never actually technically built. I mean, okay. Minoka's resistance to rejoining the group is back down, is now down to 12.3. On the plus side, the barracks are mostly built, and uh, once the barracks are done, I'm going to have them focus on the monument. Because unlike every other building in this place, it has a time limit, and I really want those tech prints. I have 34 days left to build it. So, I mean, it should be enough time, especially now that I have the resources available and it looks rather straightforward. Just build walls, build stuff, add floor, done. The problem is keeping it intact, because I need to keep it intact for 57 days, which I think is about a year. I believe each month is... Yeah, 15 days apiece. So, year would be 60 days, so three days shy of a year. And I'm guessing that the quest also entails people trying to attack it once built. So that will most likely cause a problem, eventually. So when did I pick up eggs, but no, that's just milk. But that's all going to be another issue for another time, because I'm going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague, and um... Have a good day.